So I, I really want to touch some of some of Asan's like the professional life. Um, so Asan worked for BBC as he was in London. Um, I think like how many years did you work for BBC in London? Uh, 12 years. 12 years. And yeah. you were working with Voice of America for mm -hmm. how many years? Uh, 16 years now. Okay, so that's like 28 years. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Asan, you are still very young. You are still, you know, the Asan I know, like, you know, in the 1980s, late 80s, you are still evergreen. Okay, so tell us about your profession. Like if you compare BBC and Boys of America. Yeah, um, I think uh, I learned uh, a lot from BBC and um, BBC gave me uh, discipline, uh, structure, uh, how, to, how to approach a story, how to approach a person to interview. Uh, it gave me that, that discipline and how to prioritize, what to prioritize. Uh, all these things uh, I learned from BBC. And actually when I went to BBC in 1994, um, I was, uh, I didn't know much about uh, journalism at that time because I just completed my uh, graduation and master's in English literature. And uh, I always wanted to do another master's in literature in London. Uh, that was my intention to uh, do at that time. But you have to earn a living to stay there because it's very expensive as a city. So I had to look for work and uh, fortunately um, BBC uh, took my audition. They liked my uh, uh, audition and uh, they offered me uh, to work there and, and that's how it started. So I never really thought of uh, becoming um, uh, an electronic uh, media journalist um, because I never worked for print media. Uh, mm -hmm. So that has to be understood that print media is, is uh, a bit different from electronic media, TV, radio, web. These are different. Digital media is different from uh, old time print media. And I never worked for print media, but for digital and electronic media, uh, because I was working for BBC Radio, uh, it gave me uh, a wonderful learning experience at the time. And uh, it took me years to actually pick up uh, and understand uh, journalism because I was so much into literature in my mm. life, so much into not only literature, I was so much into sports mm. and literature and music. Mm -hmm. that it was very difficult for me to come out of that and mm -hmm. get into this world of journalism, which is, which is very different. A life of a journalist is very different from a life of an artist, you know, uh, a writer. Uh, the life, their lives are very different because a writer deals with freedom. Mm -hmm. A writer, is, uh, a writer uh, an artist is always talking about freedom, whereas a journalist is talking to people from all walks of life and uh, and it, it talks about uh, the ongoing uh, uh, politics and uh, economics and all these very harsh reality mm. elements mm. so it it took me it took me a long time to actually um, get myself adjusted into this profession uh, but gradually, I think I, I did uh, make uh, the transition. And now both of them, like uh, literature, music, sports, uh, journalism, everything uh, is in, inside me now. And uh, so BBC is, it was a very great, not only BBC, I would say the, the journalism standard, journalistic standard in the UK, the United Kingdom is very high. Their journalism is fantastic. The way they do it, they can do it in so many ways. They can do good journalism. 
they can do bad journalism but they can do they're good at everything mm. if they if they want to do bad journalism even in that thing they're very good i mean tabloid journalism gossip journalism yellow journalism whatever they're very good at it and that's why bbc is a leading news organization in the world because of that because bbc reflects the 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 standard of that country the journalistic mm. standard of that country mm. Mm. uh and and in a similar way the english literature that we read which uh, comes from the uk that also shows the standard of their art and culture which is which is very good so that was a great experience for me and then i moved to voice of america um i wanted a change uh, i wanted to change my country i wanted to change my workplace and and uh, fortunately i got the opportunity i'm i'm thankful um for that opportunity and um voice of america gave me a, a different experience uh gave me lots of training in television and and visual visual media mm. uh, in in bbc i was basically working in radio but in voice of america uh, from the very beginning i started working from visual media tv and video web videos and stuff so that's a very different uh, training and i i loved it because mm. because you know in uh, in our childhood we always wanted to be in the visual media mm. um in the 70s in the 80s we watched btv uh, the only terrestrial tv channel that we had in bangladesh bangladesh television mm. btv and and you know the great personalities that we watched we always wanted to be uh, in visual media uh, and and voice of america gave me that opportunity the transition from radio to visual media and uh i i started doing visual uh, uh video interviews even before joining voice of america because i was i was very attracted to uh visual media uh, uh all along mm. and and w- when i came to voice of america they they showed me how to do it more effectively uh they they sh- they taught me how to do camera how to do editing uh so that helped me a lot when i go do interviews and i have my uh cameraman with me but even then i um i make it a point that uh i i want to know how he's framing the shot how he's transitioning from one shot to another mm. and uh, and i edit my interviews uh, i i edit them myself um uh, because i love editing my own work mm, mm. um b- because editing is like writing a poem mm. if you, if you, if you watch a good movie you'll feel like you just watched a poetry mm. uh so editing is very much like poetry it has rhythm uh editing has to be connected to your heart Mm. when you're editing uh, um, uh, uh, something interesting like a music video or a movie mm. for example for example there is a movie called um the pianist yeah the pianist by roman uh, roman polanski, polanski. Mm. that that uh, movie if you watch you i felt i just watched a wonderful poetry and uh if you watch another movie called uh great expectations yeah. uh, uh in which this is the modern version of great expectations yeah. in which you'll see robert de niro mm. Mm. and go gwenet paltrow mm. Mm. uh if you watch that movie another poetry you're watching so mm. um that is how voice of america introduced me into the the nitty gritties of visual mm. uh, techniques of uh, uh, tv and uh, visual media so this is what i learned in in voice of america mm. and the experience of america is also very different uh, you you live in the uk 
Uh, I lived there for 12 years and um, I, I still remember uh, everything I experienced in the UK. I went to Scotland, I went to uh, Inverness, I went to Edinburgh, Inverness, uh, Ben Nevis, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I Love Sky. Uh, I used to go driving all the time. Mm. Uh, I, I went to so many beaches in, in Wales. Uh, there was mm. a famous English poet who lived in, uh, lived in Cardiff, I think. Uh, or Cardiff or the great uh, beach. There is a the famous beach in, in Wales. Mm. Uh, trying to remember the name. Uh, a is very famous Ted, poet. It's like Ted Hughes. No, no. There is another poet uh, who used to... Who, who Dylan, was famous. Dylan something. Dylan, Dylan Thomas. Dylan Thomas, yeah. Uh, is it Dylan Thomas? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I yeah, think so. Yeah. Right. It sounds like uh, yeah. uh, Dylan Thomas, so, Swansea, Swansea. That's the okay. name of the place. Okay. Swansea Beach. I remember going to that Swansea Beach. A beautiful beach there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, you know, Brighton Beach, the, the pebbles on, on, on the Brighton Beach mm -hmm. uh, and, and the cliffs in uh, in the other other uh, coastal areas uh, so so what i'm trying to say is my experience in the uk in 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 the in the great britain uh, it taught me a lot it taught me a lot and the multi ethnic city of london london is such a such a mixed race city I remember when I was um, working uh, and also studying at uh, School of Oriental and African Studies. Mm. I studied I studied Indian cinema there. Wow! Uh, um, I used to go to that Central London uh, College, SOAS, mm. S O A S. Yeah. And uh, my teacher was uh, Rachel Dwyer, uh, a lady. Mm. And uh, I also studied uh, Bangla uh, to some extent there. And my teacher was William Radici, uh, a famous mm. translator of Tagore. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, th this multi-ethnic multi city uh, experience gave me, probably prepared me for the rest of my life. Mm. That's why my transition to America was very easy. Mm. Because uh, this is also a country of immigrants. Um, so uh, the experience, uh, the British experience prepared me for uh, the American experience. The Americans have a laid back attitude compared to the British people. Mm. Uh, <laughs> they, will, they will, you know, uh, they will trust you. They will be your friends and they will talk to you. They will have a share a laugh with you um it's they, they want to be they're very friendly if you meet them i mean just uh, yesterday i went to a shop and uh, i was looking for something for my lawnmower mm. and out of nowhere somebody came and uh, started helping me he's another customer and uh, he was uh, helping me and he was giving me all the tips how to fix the lawnmower and stuff mm. um i can't imagine that <laughs> in in any other country i think in america people can be very friendly mm. um and it has uh, it, it it is it can be good it can mm. i mean some people also mm. um some some people also misuse that uh, mm. sometimes um, i mean i'll, I'll just like, I'll, I'll just interject a bit like quickly uh, mm -hmm. One of the things, like, I mean, we are political scientists. So, I mean, one of the things we know about, like, British, this, like, British idea, like, this Britishness, I think UK is socially conservative. So that's why, you know, there's always that, you know, you have to initiate the initial talk and then, you know, if it works. But I think, I, I think America is, like, more, I mean, I don't know, like, it's like land of free. I mean, so that's kind of hardware mm -hmm. with their attitude, with their, their daily life you know all those interactions like more chatty more like you no know, open and then you no know, they're quite willing to say hi 
But here, you know, you have to initiate. It's like more, I think it's just hardware. You know? There's not much like, you know, you can see that even the changes are very, very incremental here. Nothing like yeah, revolution. Yeah. You know? So that, that's just one of my small <laughs> point here. Uh, just, just, just carry on. So like, I mean, so like moving from BBC to US is just like a different kind of setting, like more visual. Uh, but I think part of you was like the way I see you, you are, you are, I think you have that kind of showmanship always there. So you, you are like, you were a public speaker during our school days or like in the, in the like college days, you were doing all those performance, like you you were like music, you know, you were like reciting poems. You were quite, I think quite relaxed and like comfortable to face the audience. Unlike us, we are like extremely, extremely introvert and shy. <laughs> So I think, do you think that helped that like, you know, those earliest exposure to that? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it, it helped me so much. Um, I don't know how it got into me, but uh, I always wanted to communicate uh, with uh, people. And uh, beca because the thing is, I never want to accept that we are not connected. If people don't communicate, then you start believing that we are not connected. But actually, uh, the whole universe is connected and uh, each human being is connected to each other. You start forgetting that. Uh, you start forgetting that. Uh, if you don't talk to other people and in talking in public, helped me a lot. Um, I think my, my children are up and uh, probably we have to cut short and we have to yeah. finish this uh, another another time. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we can, we can uh, do you think we can stop here today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. fine. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, uh, we have to pick up my daughter as well. <laughs> but okay. I think, you know, we can talk quite a lot about lots of things, she will. Um, and I think it's, it's absolute pleasure, you know, the way you came across and you know very frank and free and then you know and, and you show you show your you know understanding about things which happened around you and which happened around us so i think you know like you can tell lots of stories to the people which can inspire them in a big way so i think you know we are doing another segment definitely okay so okay. very soon <laughs> And, uh, and then my plan is not to post this now because I want, really want the, the whole story, okay, the mm -hmm. whole book so that people can read the whole book and then end with something, you know, like, it's like, you know, the, you kind of mentioned about Tagore, you know, just like Opu is prepared mm -hmm. for another wedding. So we'll end with something like that. So okay. <laughs> another opening for future as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thanks to you for giving me the opportunity. And um, it's been, uh, it's been a, a while. We didn't, uh, mm. we haven't met for many years. And I think uh, we should meet uh, sometime. Yep. Yeah. Thank you so much. So I'll, I'll, I'll let you go. And then I have to pick up my daughter from Hari school. <laughs> this is our okay. first day in the induction. Uh, I don't know what's happening there. But we'll catch up soon. So I'll, I'll be in touch. Shimon, okay. okay.